boys and girls, welcome back to again another video, and here today we're going to be doing a Q&A video, one of the first times I've ever done a Q&A, and I thought it'd be kind of a cool time to do it, I see people do uh, Q&As all the time, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it too, it sounds like a cool idea, uh, I tweeted out on Twitter the other day, said so doing a Q&A video, use hashtag Ask Landed to be featured, and it could be about anything, and literally some of the questions that I've seen are about random things, so I'm kind of happy about that. There were some weird questions that I looked at. I'm going to be answering as many questions as possible. I'm not going to be answering all of them because there were a couple repeats, uh, but I'm going to be answering a lot of questions. This could be a long video, but I don't care because I want to answer questions and do cool stuff like that. So like I said, it could be about anything. Uh, people are still tweeting me a couple questions here and there, and so we might just reference through them if we get to that point. But uh, but yeah, thank, thank you to everyone who participated, whether your question's chosen or not. I appreciate you for, for, for being involved. So let's... Let's get into it, man. I'm, ex I'm excited to see some of these questions. What, what is this? All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, the first question is coming from at Ad Matt Khan. He says, can we be friends and DM often? I want to talk to a cool person like you. That's that's very nice. I'm not cool. I'm I'm the exact opposite person that you probably want to DM, to be completely honest with you. Can we be friends? Yes, but I you probably you would probably regret if I, if I started DMing you things. So let's go move on. Okay, so the next question uh, is coming from Slip and Syrup. Uh, I'm not, not, that's kind of a cool name. Uh, either way, he says, choose four players you want to see team for Black Ops 3. Oh, God. So, if I can see three, pl four players team, it's a hard one. All right, I put together a fantastic list. Okay, this was just off the top of my head. I made this in like 12 seconds. Uh, so my team, I kind of made this in how Black Ops 2 works. So, I want my anchor roll, gotta be Merc. I want my AR to be Big T. Got regular SMGs and an objective player in Teep, and I also have Ake. So we got the duo, we got Big T and Merc, the old duo. It's it's gonna be a fantastic. We got a we get a pretty good team. So uh, I'm not gonna choose any players off any other teams right now. But if I was just to make a random team right now, Black Ops 3, I'm making an org. Hey guys, would you like to play? They say yes. I'm going for Teep, Ake, Big T, and Merc, Mr. Handsome Merc. Next question comes from Instinct underscore RT. They ask, are you a college student? Also, do you think more colleges should accept esports as a sport slash career? I'm really, really glad you asked this, uh, Instinct. So, am I a college student? Yes. I'm currently a sophomore in college, currently attending a junior college, then I'll go on to a major university for those who might be outside of, um, you know, the uh, outside of America. Basically, we have a community college type thing you can go to where you can just go to a regular university. Uh, so, right now, like I said, I'm, I'm a sophomore in college and I will be moving forward and going to university in the next couple of years. Next question, obviously what he said is, uh, do you think more colleges should accept esports as a sport slash career? I mean, honestly, I think it's gonna be a little bit of time before we see anything like that, but there are high schools, there are colleges who are offering, uh, well, these colleges anyway, or universities, uh, offering sponsorships and like, you know, they're offering them like major, um, you know, scholarships to come to their college and play these esports. So do I see it growing? Do I see more colleges accepting it over time? But I think it's a little bit early uh, to be honest. Next question comes from Vortex underscore Vader. He says, who was the most underrated team in AW? That's a hard one. Um, first team that came to my head was obviously Isolation Empire or Isolation Esports. Big fan of ISO. Loved the team. They recently actually broke up, which is really sad. Um, but they they were a really solid team. Like They constantly went under the radar. They beat teams like FaZe. They, they beat really, really good teams throughout the year, and they were very, very consistent. Their hard point game was probably one of my favorites to watch. They're very aggressive, but they're also a very smart team. Uh, so the team of like Havoc, Silly, Llama God, and, and Dito was to me a, a team that no one really knew would be good coming into it because you have like a bunch of no offense but S and D stars coming together, and you know they were they ended up being fantastic at just about every single game type and took out some crazy teams as well. So uh, there's a lot of teams that you could argue to be in that spot, but I would say overall a team who rarely made changes. Uh, who was very underrated? I gotta say, I gotta say, ISO for sure, 100% ISO. Next question comes from Christian uh, G119. He says, "Who was your celebrity crush going up, growing up?" Uh, Hayden Panettiere, 100%. No, we're not, we're not even gonna talk about this anymore. Next question comes from Andrew uh, M800. He says, "Can you smile aw awkwardly into a 70s disco song for me?" Hashtag Ask Landon. I don't. Uh, next question comes from. Madame Legend, uh, it says, is, Ke is Kaylee your best friend? Sure. All right, next question we have is coming from TK 
Owen88, will you be casting a Black Ops 3 100% whether I'm casting land or not? I just want to cast, man. I just want to, I just want to just get going. Like, I feel like there was a lot of times where I would contact people and say, hey, can I, can we do some casting for Advanced Warfare? They'll be, and they would be like, you know, we'd like to, but maybe not. And I was like, I just want to cast. I just want to, I just want to, you know, talk over teams. I've watched a crazy amount of Black Ops 2 gameplay. Uh, I've been watching a little bit of my Black Ops 3 stuff, trying to just get in the mode of how that game works and stuff. So will I be casting 100%. Next question comes from Ozone underscore FPS. He says, what was your favorite AW event all year watching or casting? My favorite events, that's a hard one. There was a lot of really good events. I'm going to say watching live would definitely be MLG Worlds. That was a fantastic event to be there at. As far as watching online, I got to say, my, whenever I think of like my favorite event overall, it either is the Columbus Open, the first event, FaZe versus OG, or it was COD Champs when it was Denial versus TR, the Riot Search and Destroy. I always think of those two things when I think of Call of Duty in general. It's kind of hard to like think of a certain event. I think of plays more than anything. Uh, and casting, it had to be DC. I loved casting at DC. I've cast at Dallas and DC, or uh, UMGs for those who don't know. And DC was a fantastic place to be at. It was a fantastic city. I've been there previously. And it just ran really smoothly. It was my second time casting too. So I kind of knew going in how it was going to work and stuff. So um, yeah, so I think I said... Watching being there live would be MLG Worlds. Uh, watching on like live, like on, on a live stream, it was either Champs or the first Columbus Open event, and casting would be DC. So there you go. Next question comes from Callum Kemp underscore. He says, if you owned a team and could have any four players, who would they be? If I could have any team, so this is like any players that I want to, any any team that I want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna think back to my favorite team that I've probably ever watched was in Black Ops 2 Optic Gaming, the first Optic House squad, Big T. Merc, Scump, and Nade Shot. Boom. Next question comes from Baseball underscore Kid underscore 21. He says, do you think Black Ops 3 is, is the game where players who aren't as known become known? I mean, I don't think we're going to see as much, like, like in Advanced Warfare we saw, I think I made a list one time of players who weren't known in Ghost but were known in AW. There was like 11, 12, 13 players that we've never heard of who were on, like, major known teams. So, do I think that's going to happen in Black Ops 3? Not necessarily. I think there'll be, you know, some young players who come up, but as far as, like, the growth from AW and the younger generation, I don't think it'll be as large, if that makes sense. So, do I think that it will be a game where players become known? I mean, I think that's kind of, like, prevalent in every Call of Duty title, but I don't think it'll be as prevalent as AW. Next question comes from Davin underscore O'Brien12. He says, what was your favorite part about being of the call, I think he says being in the Call of Duty community. Big fan, by the way. Keep it up, bro. Thank you, David. I appreciate that, dude. I would like when people tell me that. That just means so much to me. I know it doesn't like show on my face or anything, but that just means a lot when people are just super, super positive. I can't tell you guys enough how that how much that means to me. My favorite part about being in the Call of Duty community is how like it's hard to explain. I think of this as a caster's perspective, but like. Whenever you're involved with this community, we have some really passionate people. We also have some negative people, but we have some really passionate people who just enjoy watching it. Who just And we have so many, like, nice people. If you go to a LAN, my favorite part about going to a LAN, and a lot of other people's favorite part about going to LAN, is just meeting everyone. Like, meeting the people that you see online, meeting the people that you've tweeted on Twitter before, the people who just care about the game. You go there, and you just chat. You have a good time. You, you, know, you don't even know much about that person, but it doesn't matter because you have one thing in common. And that is the the community and I really I'm a big fan of that as well so I gotta say my favorite part about being in the community is honestly just the people the people who are passionate about the same things that I am next question comes from I am at Nick Claywell he says who would you love to see return in Black Ops 3 well I think I've mentioned these guys so much so far in this video but I want to see Merc return I want to see Aches and Teep return uh, I want to see the goon jar the ping jar of old Basically, any player who was previously good in a Call of Duty title, specifically Black Ops 2 and Ghosts, I want them to be, I want everyone to be on par this year. I want everyone to be at their very best, so, you know, you can think of, like, older pros and whatnot who have just, not, not really, like, dwelled off, but, you know, you think of players who just had a really struggling time in this game, I want to see those guys on top again. So, there's a lot of people, but just, you know, those three, or those four in, in specific. Our next question comes from Plaxi. Uh, and this is number one. What, who is your favorite pro and which pro do you think is or which pro team do you think is underrated? Um, who's my favorite pro? I'm a big fan of Merc, big fan of Teep. Those are like my two favorites automatically. I'm a big fan of Bose too. 
Uh, and which pro and team do you think is underrated? Underrated? I'm going to choose the same player from the same team. I know I answered this question already. Uh, but I said, I said ISO. I think a very underrated pro, and there's plenty of them. Silly, 100%. Big fan of Silly. He's a Don. And I believe he's a free agent now for Black Ops 3, too. So. Next question comes from imisha underscore XO. says, would you rather move to Australia and be rich or stay in the, in the U.S. with your family but be poor? Um... Am I, is my family coming with me to Australia? Because it's like, am I leaving my family behind? So th this is a very open question, Misha. I'm just kidding. Um, but just in general, if I can move to Australia and be rich, yeah, I, I think I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with Australia. There seems like a lot of nice people there. The accents are amazing, and, uh, you know, it just seems like a cool place. Every time I've seen videos from Australia, very positive, very positive. So if I can be rich, and if my family's okay, like I don't want them to be like hurt in the U.S., I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with, you know, Australia. Heck yeah. Oh, this one's a hard one. Okay. Uh, this next question is coming from Lame Blinger 69 uh, It says, OG or Cole, who had the better year? Oh, oh all right. Well, who had the better year? See, I'm not going to answer this because this is a very open-ended question to the fact of you could say, oh, you know, Optic Gaming, they had more championships. But there were less of land events whenever Cole was kind of on their streak too. So it's kind of hard to predict. You could argue different teams here and there. You know, Cole had a little bit of an easier run. Optic had phase in their, you know, their phase constantly. So it's really hard to say. Obviously, you could say Optic Gaming has more championships. But like I said, Cole didn't play as many events and didn't have as many opportunities as OG did. So... Uh, I might have to make another. I might have to make a video about that. We'll see. Good question though. Either way, uh, Bollinger, Bollinger. Yeah. We have a, we have a lot of questions coming from this same guy. I'm at Meowzy. Still appreciate it, but I'm only going to answer a couple of these. Uh, it says, do you think Hector should keep a second team throughout a W? Um, well, he did keep a second team throughout AW. Gotcha. All right, next question. He says, what game do you like better, AW or Ghosts? I liked Ghosts better. I like AW too. It's a good game, but too fast-paced for me. I'm a, I'm a fan of, like, slower type of things. I was a massive fan of Ghosts Search and Destroy compared to AW Search and Destroy. Uh, so, and, and also from a viewer's perspective, I enjoyed Ghosts way more than Advanced Warfare. So, I'm, I'm going to choose Ghosts. Next question comes from React underscore TV. He says, where did air flying 2K ups come from? So for those who don't know, if you've been watching me for at least a little bit of time, you know that my old YouTube name, and especially some of my intros as well, still say that, um, air flying 2K ups. That was my old name. I don't know why I came up with it. I had a really old name in the past that I just didn't want to use. Um, and so I made air flying 2K ops. I chose air because I just like flying and like as well. So I kind of like went along with that. 2K and ops. I loved NBA 2K and I loved Call of Duty Black Ops 1 at the time. So I just made the name. It was stupid and I knew it was stupid at the time. But I wanted to combine like my favorite things in one name. And it, just, it didn't work out very well. So uh, and that's why my name's Air Landon now. I just chose the first uh, couple letters off of air flying 2K ops. Air and just put it uh, as Landon. So that's all I have to it's basically my gamertag story right there. Next question comes from Matt Hypes or M Hypes 55. He says, "What made you decide to be the guy who tracks all the Ross changes?" That's a really good question. I get that asked not a crazy amount, but I, I was hoping that would actually be uh, be asked. So thank you, Matt. Um, but the reason why I kind of chose it, I noticed that there was a major gap. Like there was a major gap with people, casters included, like people who just didn't know all the rosters. You would see pros tweet out and be like, "I don't even know what teams to join or what teams to ask to join because there's constant roster changes going on." So I started Mr. Roster Mania around the very beginning of AW, and uh, that was like whenever I think the first thing I tweeted out was that Parasite was dropped or left phase or something like that. Um, and people seemed to really enjoy it. I got like a thousand followers in the first like week, I think. So that, I mean, it was just like. I, after the first time that I saw it starting to grow and people enjoyed what I was doing, I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to keep this going. I got a lot of profiles, people asking me, you know, what roster changes have happened. It's a very hard thing to follow in our scene, and I wish that it was more cleaned up so that people could realize it, um, you know, easier. But it's still, it's it's a, far, it's a very hard thing to kind of see and look at because it is on Twitter. You, know, you have to be on Twitter constantly to realize these things that are going on. Um, but, you know, I, I've always I've always const constantly thought, should I just drop the Mr. Roger Mania thing and just move on? But, uh, you know, I like that. I like, I like tracking roster changes i think my most knowledge that i have it has to do with players playing with each other how it's going to affect them in a game situation so uh what's, what decided to really do it in the first place was that was the lack of knowledge that was kind of going on so and i encourage anyone else who wants to do anything like that to track a certain thing you know just go out there and do it like just try your best to you don't have to be like um, you know the esports nations the kind of esports pds you don't have to be like an updating website but if you just want to track something make videos about stuff that you think people will enjoy that's not really taken into part you know you could make whatever it should be or whatever you think it could be uh but i just chose roster changes so there you go 
This is a good question. So this one's coming from TRN underscore Phoenix. He says, if you had the opportunity to team with three casters at COD Champs next year, who would who would you take and watch? So these are three casters. So first person I'm going to go with, oh, this is a hard one. I'm a, I'm a, I like Chance. Chance is my favorite. Uh, you know, he had a hard time whenever the, I think the casters versus the players or whatever it was. It was the casters versus the pink wall. That was a really good game. I want to give Chance another opportunity. He knows the game outside and, you know, and whatnot. Like, he knows the game perfectly so if i was to choose then this is next year but still i'm gonna choose chance next player hype factor we gotta have courage courage is like the guy that brings the hype he's gonna be casting to us while we're in the game can't ask for you know, whenever you have a caster literally literally telling you all the information you're good to go so it's gonna be me chance courage and as a fourth I'm gonna go with my man Puckett. I love Puckett. Puckett's an awesome dude. Like, probably one of my favorite casters to listen to. He's been in the scene for a crazy amount of time. So I'm gonna go with Puckett. I think he's gonna be the leader and kind of take us casters to a victory. And this is COD Champ, so we're gonna take this very, very seriously. So, so yeah, that's the squad that's gonna be rolling out. Next question comes from II Pancho. He says, Do you think it's going to be hard for pros to switch? For an Xbox to a PS4 control, I think he means controller. Either way, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a little bit different. But from what I've seen, like I saw Hook playing PS4 8s the other day, L literally still the best. Like he's still one of the best players in the game. He dropped like 45 in an uplink. Um, so do I think it's gonna be hard? I think it'd be different, but I don't think we're gonna see as much difference as everyone thinks. I think uh, you know if you're good at holding a controller, doesn't matter what system you're on. At least for the most part, obviously there do there is a couple things that come into play, uh, but so. Is it going to be hard for them to switch? Yes, but I don't think it's going to be as crazy of like, oh, this player was good in an Xbox, he's going to suck at PS4. Like, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Next question comes from the Maester 8 He says, do you play zombies? And if so, will you be planning to play zombies in Black Ops 3? 100%. I love Black Ops 1 zombies. I used to play, with it, play that with my friends all the time. Kino Der Toten, probably one of my most favorite memories of all time is just playing that constantly. So will I be playing Black Ops 3 zombies? 100%. 100%. It looks awesome. Some of the trailers that I've seen look pretty cool as well. So, yes. 112%. So, we finally made it to the final question of the Q&A. I apologize if your question wasn't used, but this is where I'm kind of drawing the line here. We've answered a lot, and I appreciate everyone who has contributed their questions. I couldn't answer all of them. There was there was a lot of them, uh, which I really do appreciate. So, his question is, out of stats... Oh, this is coming from Saber, by the way. Uh, he says, out of stats and events, who do you think is better, current phase or current optic? Now, I'm going to give you an answer you're probably not super happy with. I am going to be making a video about this. This is kind of funny that you asked that, actually. Uh, so, Saber, I'm going to be making a video about this current thing talking about it and then probably my newest video that's going to be coming out in the next couple of days i don't know what's going to be called exactly I'm, I'm working on the graphics and working on actually editing it all down together but i talk about the combination you know the events that optics won the fact that optic never beat the phase team who would have won if they would have faced in the grand finals a bunch of statistics a bunch of amazing things that cannot wait to show you guys in this video i'm getting ready to record actually another part to it and it's going to be fantastic so i know it's not what you want to hear but i want to give you a full-on answer not just in the q a but in the full-on video because I think that question uh, needs to be answered in a full-on video so I'm just letting you guys know that now and I'm actually gonna answer another question I'll answer another question because I didn't really answer that one fully all right this is the final question now since that one wasn't really an answer uh, it says uh, from at Tim O'Rox or just Tim O'Rox uh, it says can you make a following spree I get this question a lot whenever I tweet out you know if you're reading this we're pals or whatever people are always like if we were pals you'd actually follow me so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something pretty cool if you made it to this part of the video congratulations and to reward you, if you want to, post your Twitter down below, put your at, and say why I should follow you. I'll follow like maybe two or three people, uh, put it down in the comments. You don't have to give me like a major reason, just say this is the reason why you should follow me, because I'm fantastic. Here's my at, there you go, boom. So I'll follow like maybe two or three people who put their, their at down in the comments. And yeah, that's finally going to do it for the Ask Landon Q&A. So guys, thank you so much if you put a question down. It really means a lot. Having, you know, this amount of, you know, feedback and stuff about this video really means a lot. So thank you guys so much for anyone who asked questions who, uh, you know, didn't get your question asked. I apologize. Most likely it repeated or I just didn't have time for it. Uh, so I do apologize. We'll be doing more Q&As in the future. Let me know if this video did come out well. If you want to see more Q&As like this or any more videos similar to this one in the future, make sure to like the video if you guys did enjoy it. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a fantastic day. And until next time. Peace.